This week, we're reading four stories by women. Alice Walker's Everyday Youth, Leslie Marmon Silko's Lullaby, Tony Kate Bambara's Medley, and Sandra Cicerno's Woman Hollering Creek. Like racial and religious minorities, women were long kept out of the literary canon because women's lives and stories weren't seen as important, and women weren't thought to have the mental or intellectual capacity to write anything worth reading. As Scarlet Letter author Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote, America is now wholly given over to a damned mob of scribbling women, and I should have no chance of success while the public is occupied with their trash. Women's writing has often been, and still often is, dismissed as trash, or in a slightly more condescending way, as chiclet. It's seen as something simple and entertaining for the lowly masses, but not worth consideration as literature. Really, until the women's rights movement in the 1970s, no one took women seriously as writers. Even those whom we now think of as the great writers of their time had to write under male pseudonyms. The Bronte sisters, Charlotte, Emily, and Anne, for example, published under the names Courier, Ellis, and Acton Bell. And if you think this is a thing of the past, J.K. Rowling was told to use her initials because her publisher thought that most of her audience for Harry Potter would be young boys, and that those young boys wouldn't want to read a book by a woman. However, like most aspects of our identity, our gender alone does not define us. More and more, we as a society are starting to explore the idea of intersectionality, which is the interconnected nature of social categories such as race, class, and gender. These categories can all affect our experience of privilege and discrimination, so identifying these authors as women writers is too simplistic. Alice Walker is an African-American author best known for her novel, The Color Purple. Walker grew up in rural Georgia, the youngest of eight children. Both of her parents were sharecroppers, and her mother worked as a seamstress for extra money. Coming from this challenging background, Walker's achievements are impressive. Added to that, Walker became a civil rights activist who focused especially on issues of intersectionality, even coining the term womanist, which is feminist focusing specifically on women of color. Her point here was to acknowledge that because of their race, women of color faced gender bias differently than white women. Despite her racial and gender activism, though, Walker's been out, called out on numerous occasions for being anti-Semitic. Most recently, there was a controversy over her support of David Icke, a noted Holocaust denier. This is an important thing to note when discussing intersectionality because it reminds us that just because you lack privilege in one area doesn't mean you can't discriminate or oppress someone in another. I've posted an optional article in your modules about the controversy for context. Our second author is Leslie Marmon Silco, a Laguna Pueblo writer from New Mexico. Despite her fame as a Native American author, Silco herself prefers a more nuanced description as one quarter of Pueblo, but also Anglo and Mexican American. Silco grew up living at the edge of the Pueblo Reservation and never fully fit into either Native or White American cultures. However, she learned a lot about her Native culture and language from her grandmother and aunt, who were both traditional storytellers, and strongly felt connected to those narratives. Her own writing reflects both her love of her Pueblo heritage and the complexity of her mixed ancestry. Our next author, Tony Kane Bambara, was an editor, teacher, writer, and cultural and community worker who was born in 1939 in New York City. Bambara first rose to prominence in 1970 as the editor of The Black Woman, a contemporary anthology of fiction, poems, and essays by up-and-coming African-American female writers, including Alice Walker. She went on to become a prolific author in her own right, as well as being recognized as a civil rights activist before her untimely death in 1993. Finally, we'll be looking at Sandra Cicernos' Woman's Hollering Creek. Cicernos holds dual citizenship in the U.S. and Mexico, and like Silco, claims both aspects of this dual identity. She grew up as the only daughter in a family of six brothers in an economically disadvantaged family. She felt isolated within her family and in both countries in which she lived, saying that she felt she was always straddling two countries, but not belonging to either culture. Her childhood experiences significantly shaped her writing, and her most famous novel, The House on Mango Street, became an iconic story of coming of age in a Latinx household. Her writing is also explicitly focused on gender, as she explores the misogyny in both American and Mexican cultures, leading one critic to describe her work as the voices of thousands of silent women. As you read this week, I want you to think about how all of the aspects of these women's lives shape their identity and their writing. As always, you have a discussion board post which will deal with this topic and your reading journal. Also, keep working on your first essay and let me know if you have any questions. Happy reading!